Hello guys, today I'm releasing the React Native Drag and Drop Apple, which I've been working on for a while. The Apple lets you build responsive iOS and Android apps with a drag and drop interface. You can access the Apple at interactiveapple.com. I will leave a link in the description. And please use a modern version of Google Chrome browser to use the app builder as Firefox and Safari are not fully supported yet. As far as I know, this is the world's first uh, React Native drag and drop app builder, which you can uh, access and use directly from a web browser. But keep in mind that this is a demo release and you might encounter bugs. If you don't encounter any bugs, that's good. If you do, it's normal at this point. All components in React Native are not fully supported by the app builder yet, but they will be as this project keeps developing. So let's take a detailed look on how to use the app builder. To the left, we have the component sidebar, which contains predefined components, which can be used in the app builder. You can also create your own component. At the bottom of the sidebar, you can switch development phone and work in iPhone or Android. To use a component, simply drag it and drop it on the phone. To preview the app in line mode, click live under the environment settings model. You can also preview the app in full 3D to get an in-hand experience. To change the background color of the screen you are working on, use the background module to the right. It supports hex and RGBA color with opacity, so you can just drag here or you can just click a predefined component or you can supply your he own hex or RGBA values. To copy the current screen's background to all screens, click the copy button. To change screens, simply click on a screen in the screens model. To add and remove screens, click the plus and minus buttons in the screens module. To remove a component, drag it and drop it on the trash can at the bottom right. To remove a component inside a component, also known as a nested component, click the minus button. To change the height of component, click on the settings icon for the component and click on height. You can select value auto or a percentage value. You can also set a detailed percentage value if you click on detailed and use the slider. The app builder is completely free to use, but some of the functions requires an activated account, which costs nine euro as a one-time fee. This is a cost I implemented just in order to keep the servers for this project running. To change the width and height of a nested component, simply drag the handle in the corner of the component. And to move them around, just yes, simply drag them around. You can also adjust the height at a more detailed level in the dimensions module. The width of an nested component is defined as percentage, as you can see here, in a 1 to 12 grid. This means a width of 6 by 12 is 50% of the total screen. The height is uh, measured in the units as you can see right here. This makes the app responsive on all devices. You can change the value of how unit size will be uh, represented in your compile app by clicking the app settings tab and choosing screen density right here and you can just drag this slider here. The current settings means that one unit in the app builder will correspond to 1.5 density independent pixels in React Native. The higher the screen density of your target device, the higher you will want to set this value. To add nested components inside the component, click the plus button and choose a component. The app builder has flex support, which makes it possible to align content inside a component. 
click the settings tab for the component and choose a percentage height value let's set it to a hundred percent so this means the component will take up 100% of the entire screen. Then navigate to content and set the content to either top, center or bottom. These settings correspond to flex start, center and flex end. To change the space between nested components, click on the margin icon and use the slider. To change padding of the component, click on padding and use the slider. You can also change the component background, margin, view type to either view, scroll view or keyboard avoiding view. And you can also set a custom component name, which allows you to easily find a component in the source code of the compiled app. To copy a component to multiple screens, click on screens and select the screens you wish to copy the component to. So let's say we want this copied to one, two and three. So I'm just gonna select them. And let's see, screen two and three contains the component we just created and screen 4 does not. Let's change the height back to auto. To add more components to the current screen, simply drag and drop a new component from the sidebar. To switch places between these components, drag them around and they will be reordered. To edit the content of a nested component, simply click it and define a file or value depending on the component type. To change the settings of a nested component, click on the wrench icon of the nested component you want to edit. For example, for buttons, you can change font size, font color, weight, letter spacing, text align. You can also change the background of the nested component, border width, radius, sorry, color and radius. To navigate to a screen you have created, when the user clicks on the nested component, click on the navigation tab and choose the screen you wish to navigate to. React Native Navigation is integrated into the App Builder and you don't have to code navigation by yourself. To add nested components inside a nested component, click on the Components Plus icon and choose a component. For this example, let's create a simple image text overlay which navigates to screen 2. To save your app, click on the save icon and the app is saved. You need an account in order to be able to save your applications and you can access them through the saved apps uh, tab and you can just click load and you can save as many apps as you want to. You can work on multiple apps at the same time and compile uh, multiple versions of one app for different target devices. To create a new app, click on the plus icon and create new app. And we just got a new app created for us. Before you compile your app, you can also set app orientation for the target device by clicking the settings tab and app orientation. You can set it to 
portrait, landscape, or auto rotate. I recommend using portrait uh, mode in most cases. To compile and download your app, click the compile icon right here, and the app will be compiled and downloaded. For this example, let's create a very simple app and compile it, then take a quick look at how the source code looks. So let's just create an image here. We can add a component height of, let's say, 60%. Let's add image. It's going to crop it a little bit like that. Let's make it a bit bigger. We can also set the content here to center. Let's add a text input. Let's say yeah, username. We're not going to add any styling for this now. We're just going to leave it as it is. And also text input, input, uh, text input secure for the password, like that. Let's set the height of this component to 40%. And let's set the content to center, like that. So now we got a super simple app in just a couple of seconds. Let's go ahead and rename this component to logo component and save it. Let's rename this component, which contains the username and password inputs, to input component and hit save. And as you can see here, the component name has been saved. Let's also create a screen too. And let's just drag in an image gallery here. Uh, we can just add a couple of random photos. like that let's go to we can also name this uh, let's name it image gallery like that so now we just simply got two screens a start screen with a logo type and username password input and a second screen with just an image gallery so let's just go ahead and uh, save that and then uh, compile and download it. So now it's compiling, it's just taking a couple of seconds. Now it's done. Uh, as you can see here, Chrome, if you're using Chrome, which you should, uh, you're getting uh, these warnings. Uh, Zip is not commonly downloaded and maybe dangerous. I'm working on getting this removed. Uh, this is because, the, of course, the application contains uh, code. Uh, that's why uh, Google Chrome is warn warning about it. But of course, just click keep. This is just a normal React Native app in a zip file. So let's go ahead and open it up. And now, as you can see, you got the entire app here compiled for you, and it's named My App as default. So it's gonna go into the My App, and this is the root of the app. And if we open up, let's see app.js right here. So the start screen, you can see we're actually importing. Let's just remove this. Um, we're importing the create stack navigator since we're using navigation in the app. We're also importing screen one and screen two, the screens we created right here, right? And we're setting the header mode to none because we're not using the header in this case. And then we're just uh, giving the start screen the stack navigator and it will start on screen one. All right, so now let's go into the source of the actual components we have created. So go into app, then we get the components and image here. So let's go to components first. And as you can see, these are divided into screens. So now let's go into screen one. And in here, we got the components we created for screen one. So first we got the actual screen component right here. Then we're importing the logo component, which we named earlier, and the input component, which we named earlier. So this is the logo, and these are the username and password inputs. All right. And then the logo, logo component is its own component, which is just an image right here, fully responsive as well. And then we get the input. Oop. Then we get the input component that we named as well. And this contains, as you can see, a text input for the username right there and a text input for uh, the password as well which is a secure input and this is fully responsive as well 
And if we go into screen two, you can see we got the screen two component, the main screen right there. We also got the image gallery component that we created with four images. All right, so it's all set up. It's just to start the app. So let's go back, let's go up to folders, go back, go into the image folders. So all right, so all your images that you upload in the app builder are compiled into this folder and they are uh, divided by screens as well. So it's easier for you to find them. So if you go into screen one, you can see this is the logo we created for screen one, right? If you go to screen two, we can find all the images we're using in screen two. So that would be these four images, right? So let's just open up and take a look that they have been compiled correctly. And my computer is hanging. This is great. <coughs> All right, I guess cut. Uh, I'm gonna cut a second here and then uh, uh, continue. So yeah, my Windows uh, PC is up and running again. Uh, so as I said, now we're in the screen two image folder and uh, we got the two images that we just took a look at and they have been correctly compiled. Yeah. So in here you can find all your source code with your name components and the images you have uploaded. Um, the code itself uses an indention of four, so it's easier to read. Uh, everything is very well structured, as you can see. And as uh, you saw, all the folders are have a great structure, so it's easier to keep developing. And uh, to start this app, app now, all you have to do is download Node and create the React Native app command for npm. And yes, go ahead and start it up on a emulator or on your physical. Uh, Android or iOS phone. I will do a couple of more tutorials on how to use the app builder uh, a bit more uh, in depth uh, about how to create specific applications and I will continue developing the app builder further on. So thank you, bye bye.